30 minutes mark, ladies and gentlemen. And, um, yeah, it's been an eventful week. A couple of days has been, uh, something to, to talk about. And, uh, yeah, let's get to it. I just want to make sure that the video is up properly. Uh, I get some light over here. All right. Share and share alike. As always, just going to go on quick for this 30 minutes smarky. Want to discuss what happened this past week or so. Yeah, it's a couple of days. We were able to finally get an interview with Teddy Hart, recently released from prison. And um, wanted to share his thoughts. And then afterwards, we got a nice uh, reaction video from a, a, a popular YouTuber and, and I guess podcaster. So we'll have a conversation about that as well. I'll lead up to that. So let me just share this quick and we can go. Funny having multitude of problems with going on. I don't know. I think on YouTube is, I mean, excuse me. I think Facebook is slowly but surely trying to get rid of me. So I think I share too much. I'm way over exuberant with the sharing. So. Tito, what up, boy? What's good? Hope you checked out that video with uh, Teddy Hart. Hope you checked out the audio and stuff. It's it's going to be on this week's episode, but the video is up on Facebook Live and on YouTube. So uh, let's, uh, let's, um, let's have some discussion about it. Let's have some talks. All right, so this past week was... One for the ages. Uh, it seems as though that Turnbuckle Tabloid slowly but surely is finally getting some kind of attention. I mean, we've been getting attention before. We get thousands of, of listeners a week, view streams and all that, it's, which, which is awesome. But we've always been on that precipice of breaking through to, to get... I would hate to say viral because... I don't know, once it go viral, it's almost like you're saying you're selling out and shit, but whatever. But that's what you want. You want to go viral, you want to get more attention, you want to get more more looks to your podcast, especially when it comes to wrestling, because everybody in your mother has a fucking wrestling podcast. Everybody has a wrestling podcast. But lucky for us, we have not only individuals who are in tune with what's going on in wrestling, have some kind of minds. We, we, myself and Oski, we, you're looking at us. We're, 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 we're hosting a show, which is two guys who are from two different generations and you get two uh, perspectives of what's going on. And when I was looking to doing a show early on, it was always about just getting fans who are not just those marky kind of guys, but guys who could be real, and when we base Turnbuckle Tabloid and put it together, I thought once certain guys were slitting into the hosting chair, it wasn't working. I said, fuck it. I might as well be the one who, who takes the helm. And Oski, he fit right in. So this past week, we were able to connect with an interview, with a conversation that we weren't able to get in quite a while because scheduling wise and, you know, whatever uh, instances of, 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 of criminal activities or whatever the case said individual was in you know, we just couldn't we couldn't meet, meet up so finally this past week we were able to lock down a conversation with teddy hart if you guys don't know the whole backstory with teddy hart basically with teddy hart um you know teddy hart is from the hart family and for years, this guy has been recognized as a, as a talented individual, but also he's a guy that has his 
digressions. He's had his problems. He had his his issues, and also he's a bit off. He can be very verbose. And it's kind of tough to wrangle him when you want to have a conversation with him. Business-wise, I don't know because I've never done business with him. That's that's promoters' dealings. But when it comes to him as a wrestler, he has a fan base. And he has a lot of individuals who have a appreciation for his craft. So here at Terminal Tabloid, we've always ran... We've always run into to Teddy. We've always run into him. Seen him at shows. He's recognized us. Seen me. I'm not hard to freaking miss because you know, partially albino, googly eyes, and fucking just. I, I'm just not. I'm not that. I, I look like a fucking extra from from fucking like a Blade movie or some shit, or like I am Legend. I'm I, I, I'm not that hard to miss. But he always recognizes. He always shows his love. In fact, the fucker sat there and he. Hustled me to buy him a shirt just to get an interview, and whatever the case may be, I never got the interview until now. But I still like Teddy. It, it was cool. It, it, it's fine. I never really have any issues because, like I say, anytime he saw us, he always show his love. So the other night we were sitting in, and I was just finishing up an interview with Chris Barton, uh, indie wrestler and extra- extraordinaire. By the way, for you guys who've seen the video already with Teddy Hart on YouTube. Or on uh, on Nightwave, the the individual cross for me is not Oski. Oski was not here that day. Oski was at home dealing with his home stuff, and I was uh, finishing up that interview with Chris Barton, who will be on the show soon. We were sitting around, and a uh, friend of the show, who's done who done a multitude of things for us, we were we were talking and. Just, just pitching ideas for what we're gonna do for the for the for the podcast and what 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 what's the next upcoming interviews we can line up and stuff and what we could do for um, just bettering the show. We were just sitting around shooting the shit. And if you can see, we were over there fucking drinking a few beers and shit, and we were like just shooting the shit. He's having a conversation with another connect, someone who's in the business. So while he's talking. We were goofing around. It was like, yo, it would be funny if we could get a conversation with Teddy Hart right now. And it was like, dude, he's in jail. And I'm like, yeah, it's fucking it's crazy what's going on with him. So said fourth person, let's just say made it happen. We found out Teddy was home. I was like, holy shit. Really? Yeah, he's home right now. Fuck. All right. Dude, we need an interview with him. Just came home. Got to have an interview with him. We didn't think it was going to happen. We were just shooting the shit, fucking around. And when his handler had said, yeah, uh, let me talk to him and see, see if he's up for it. We was like, holy shit, really? When Teddy confirmed and said he was going to go on it, we had about 10 minutes to set this whole up, this whole thing up. Had about 10 minutes to set everything up, I had to set up Skype, get everything up, because I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought it was just a fucking shot in the dark. I didn't even think the guy was home. So fuck it. Ten, ten minutes to set everything up, get the schematics, what it is that they want, talk to his handler. He was just worried about what occurred in other podcasts. And he's like, look, I don't, I don't want it to be a thing that he, he, he gets lambasted. Or, and he's like, listen, don't worry about it. I got him. I'm going to take care of him. And mind you, this is an interview I've been wanting to do with him, a conversation I want to have for him a long time. But this was actually at the right time because he just got home. There was a lot of uh, speculations and, and accusations that was going on with him prior to his arrest. But to be honest, I didn't really want to delve in that. We didn't want to really delve with that. I wanted to deal with the shit, what he was going to do after his jail time, you know, after his arrest. What was his next coming? Because he just came out of MLW. He was released from there. And he, um, uh, he got this arrest. There was a stories about his, his, his woman, his fiance, whatever you want to call her, living in a car and all this stuff. And we just wanted that story. And plus, didn't want to really go into anything else that anybody else was already delving into because I'll get to that in a second. So, in any case, 
We get the call and it says it's good. So Teddy will give us 20 minutes. I'm like, Fine. That's all I wanted anyway. I didn't really want to go into a whole thing because, you know, weird. It is what it is. It was already about almost like one o'clock in the morning, something like that. In that case, it's already like three sheets to the wind. And just having this conversation, it was like, fuck, it's fucking going to be hilarious. So we get Teddy on. And if you guys have not listened to Teddy in a conversational form or interview form, he's um he's pretty much an unbridled horse. You, you can't wrangle him. It's tough to wrangle a guy like that. This guy is all over the place and the best that you can do is just let him do him let him ride out and just let him just just it's just like an unbridled horse just let it get it out of his energy you just just let him just get that get that off let him let him just work it out and that's what was the whole purpose of it if anybody's ever listened to interviews that i've done or um conversations i've had with individuals it's more along the line is like, look, just as I would take a top tier legend in the game that we've had on the show, such as a, a, an amazing red or homicide or guys of that magnitude, I would share that same respect with them that I would do with listeners to the show who call in or indie guys who come on the show. It's, it's spread out across that platform. And I take the same kind of measures when it comes to individuals especially when you know that they're very problematic and they've had a history of being out there and of course you're going to put them on your on your show for that because of course you're going to want listeners you want viewers you'd be a fool to pass that shit up that's ridiculous if we didn't do that so teddy comes on and yeah you you gotta write it out you you got to play the role and you got to be that guy. And especially when you're told ahead of time because they know your show, they know the kind of or kind of um, host you are, the kind of conversationalist that you are that. Listen, take it down a little bit. You know, he just got out. This is his first podcast. That's not, and I said, this, I'm not going to put him on a sandbag. I'm, I'm not going to do that to him. That's not. That's not my, my, my whole motivation here. I just want to get him on, let him air out what he wants to air out, what, 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 what's his, his, his intentions, what was his, his time, his feeling when he was arrested, what was going on. And you learn certain things here and there that I didn't know about. Like, for instance, he spoke about that WWE paid for his rehab. Didn't know that shit. That was kind of interesting for me. So I was like, cool. And I didn't want to sandbag him. In the arena in which... We are in for Turnbuckle Tabloid, as stupid as we are and as goofy as the show is and as ridiculous as we, we, we come off. At the end of the day, we are wrestling fans. So call us marks, call us whatever it is you, you want to, but we're wrestling fans. The moment I'm not a wrestling fan anymore, I'm not doing this show. I'm saying fuck this and I'm out. I'm not doing this show anymore. I'll move on and I'll do... The religious network or some shit. I'm I'm out. I'm not doing this. It, it once it becomes a chore, it's donezo. I'm not doing this shit. And the terminology of of Mark, we use it all the time here. I, I call everybody a fucking Mark. I don't care. And I always said there's levels to Marxism, if you want to say that. There's levels to this shit. But in all honesty, uh Once that's done, I'm not being a fan of this shit no more, and I'm not doing this shit no more. So, um, we carry on the interview, and like I said, what what what, what am I gonna do? I, I'm not gonna sit there and browbeat him with whatever stories or or or, or alle- uh, um, accusations or allegations have been thrown his way because you've already seen it, you've already heard it on other platforms i'm not gonna beat a dead horse so what i'm gonna do what's my what's what, what's what's my reasoning for this so i just wanted to get that perspective of what he's gonna do after this arrest and what's happening and what's gonna go on 
turns out that uh, the 20 minutes turned out to be almost an hour. And when you have a guy like Teddy, you just let him go. No, that's just what happens. You just let him go and you just let him do him. You shine up, you shine up the, 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 the individual across from you or in this case over the phone and you see where they're going to go with it. If you decide to be uh, combative with certain things that they say or you want to uh, uh, debate something, that's fine. But you always keep the focus on the talent or the person being interviewed or the person that's in the conversation. That's the basically that's that that's the point of why you have them on your show. They are there for a reason. They're putting themselves over and they're putting you over. So Teddy went off on his rant. And I got to say, once again, thank you for Teddy. And thank you for his handlers for letting that happen because this was done on a whim. It was on some fucking sipping a beer. Hey, see if Teddy comes on. Who knew if he was going to come on? And he showed up, said he was going to do it. It's like, holy shit. All right, cool. Like, 10 minutes. I'm going to sit there and do a fucking uh, 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 a research of what's been going on in the past year for him or whatever. 10 minutes. I'm going to get what he's going to give me at that moment. And I'm out. Good. So, interview goes out. Once it's out, I sent that out raw. I didn't give a fuck. I just took the video feed, and we even had during the interview. If you listen to the shit, someone was people were calling in trying to get in with the conversation. I was trying to block it, and I end up cutting the conversation with Teddy by accident. I'm like, fuck, I lost him. And when he comes, you know, I dial him back. He's still talking. The guy's fucking so out of there that he's still talking. Didn't even know that the conversation was cut off. Fucking awesome. So I just sent the 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 whole thing raw. Didn't edit it. Didn't anything. Because why? Didn't give a fuck. Especially on YouTube. Don't care. Don't give a fuck about no YouTube. They fucking they're gonna police this shit anyway. I was surprised they didn't they didn't take it down because of the profanity and shit that was used. I didn't care. So fuck it. Throw it up there anyway. I'm not a fan of it anyway. So. Interview goes up on YouTube. We shared it. It was like, fuck it. You know, you know, far be it for, from us to have handlers on social media, but we have individuals who basically help and share the video. And it got into certain individuals' hands. They, people have seen it or the case may be. And it was cool. That's the point of it. You want to get fucking over. That's what it is. And so you put it out there and um, I got a call the other night that Nightwave played it on his show. Now, if you guys don't know Nightwave, you're like me because I, I I barely knew who he was either until I saw his his um his interview with Teddy Hart, which I got to tell you was fucking crazy. I thought it was fucking crazy in a good way. It was two men who were going back and forth. It sounded very old school, uh, like. Uh, Rush Limbaugh versus a left winger or Howard Stern versus elegant Elliot often like some kind of shit like that but it was still good because it was entertaining and it was also one of those that it make you it, it made you think like what the fuck are they talking about like what what's the big issue when I finally found out what was the big issue that you know I was like okay all right all right whatever uh Still entertaining. I thought it was still fun to, to, to listen to. And it just I, I, I really didn't pay attention to why was it so important. I get it. There's an, an involvement of illegal activity, something of, of the magnitude of that deals with 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 uh, um, the uh, missing individuals and 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 um pedophilia and stuff like that and i was like it, it, I, in that in that interview only got gist of it because of how they were communicating over each other and it, it just went everywhere then finally when i i was sent the blurb about what it was i was like oh okay i didn't i, I didn't think it was all about that i said like, okay well, fine so i hear that that night wave played our interview on his show i was like fuck, i was like dope that's fucking cool all right whatever um uh, wasn't sure if any of uh, any of the guys sent it to him or 
if it was uh, somebody said that, I, I didn't really care. I just like, oh, shit. I, I heard a clip. And, of course, he went in on it, which is fine. I expect that. Because, honestly, I'll be a hypocrite if I sit there and say that if somebody's talking shit about me that I'm going to be upset about it because I do it every fucking week on this show. This is what we do here. We talk shit and we'll fucking bash somebody, be it a podcast, a wrestler, a promotion. That's what we do. We just fucking we will do it. But we also give praises where praises is due. I'm not one to sit there and say that I search for controversy, but I'm an individual who sits there and says that, you know what? Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has them and most of them stink. So either you're going to listen to what I say and enjoy it or you think it's funny or you think it's, it's fact or you just think I'm, I'm just an idiot. I'm an asshole. It's whatever. But the reason for the podcast is that we're here to entertain. That's what it's here for. And we'll have our sporadical moments in which we'll sit there and you know try to go viral here or, or get the likes there, or get the views there. Because once again, like I mentioned earlier, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get followers and listeners for the show. So when I heard about this, I said, oh, okay, let me, let me check it out. Of course, I'm going to check it out. Soon as I, 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 I get linked up to what Nightwave was playing, uh, I had to laugh. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I thought it was funny because to me, it was one of those instances to where, yeah, you're going to have this, this reaction to what Teddy's saying, but I'm also like, but dang, why the fuck I'm getting hit with shrapnel? What the fuck did I do? I'm being called a mark. I'm being called a cop, like a dick sucker, an ass kisser and all this shit. And I'm going, really? That that's what this is what you're playing it for to bash me, my guy. When we did a story, because we did the story on Teddy Hart and Nightwaves, their their interview during Wrestling Rundown a couple of weeks ago. I didn't bash your shit. I mean, I don't really care. I I, think, I just think it's funny that that's what you did. But I didn't bash. I just found it confusing that you guys were sitting there arguing over something that I don't think a lot of people knew about or even cared about. I was just like, oh, okay. So when I hear Nightwave talk about um, Nightwing, Nightwave, I'm sorry, whatever. So when I hear Nightwave talking about, I thought it was going to be basically about Teddy Hart. But you know, I started getting hit with shrapnel. I said, shit. He started telling me that I look like, uh, uh, what was it, an audio repair guy? <laughs> <laughs> or I look like a, a tattoo parlor owner, owner, and I'm like that doesn't that doesn't phase me. I'm okay with that. I've heard worse. I mean that doesn't really bother me. As a matter of fact, it was kind of complimentary. You know how much money certain, certain guys if they got their hustle going on, how much money they make. Shit, I got that. I got um. I look like the common thug that he knew when he was in his old neighborhood, and it's like okay. So what the fuck am I supposed to be dressed like at one o'clock in the morning in my house? In my makeshift studio. What the fuck am I supposed to be dressed like? Suit and tie, mean Gene Oakland look? What the fuck am I supposed to look like? It didn't make sense to me. And I was like, okay, fine. And um, another another compliment came my way, quote unquote, was that I look like I had four baby mothers. And I'm like, sure. Let my sexual prowess be that big. Thank you. At least, at least generally, I would know that I had sex four times because I had four baby mothers. You didn't really, you're not really hurting me with that shit. I, I'm okay with that. Before I continue, I got to say, like I said, I don't really know about Nightwave show. Didn't really know. Somebody put me onto it when it came to that Teddy Hart uh, interview. And um, the only thing that I've learned afterwards once people told me was his show is not generally with wrestling. It's something, it's a more broader scale. It's more of a uh, cultural show. He does like politics and all that stuff, which is fine. Shit, I fucking wish I want. I, I want to do shows like that. Fuck. That's probably going to be one of the things that I do once I'm tired of watching wrestling and shit. But, but honestly, that that's 
something that came into play with me because you're calling me a mark, you're calling me a kiss ass, you're calling me a dick sucker, which by the way, let me explain something. There's two things in my life that I'm not. One is a dick sucker. Never have, never would have been. And it's in, not in the form of sense of being homosexual or anything. I, I know what he was trying to play with is just basically saying, oh, you're just shining up and kissing somebody's ass. I kiss ass, but that's only with short, thick, voluptuous women. That's I kiss their ass, but there still has to be a payoff for that also. In any case, when it comes to the the sucking dick thing, my guy, I don't do that at all. Definitely, no, no, no. And the reason why I'm going to explain this is because if I would have, or if I am that kind of person, this show would be much bigger than what it is at this point right now. You know, we have our X amount of followers here, X amount of listeners there, but again, but it's not in the magnitude of other people who I know in the podcasting, vlogging, um, YouTube age, who have kissed and sucked massive dick and ass just to get there. I've been podcasting for five years. Have a nice listenership, followership. It could be more on a grander scale if I was that kind of dude. I've lost friendships because I don't fucking kiss ass. I lost jobs because I don't kiss ass. Hell, I've lost family members that we don't speak because I don't kiss your fucking ass. So f- to do it for a fucking podcast? My guy. It's not in my realm to do any of that. I'm far from that. Definitely. But in any case, uh, the other terminology that was used was, I'm a mark. Here's a newsflash. For any one of you individuals that enjoy anything that is a hobby or a a a trait or a uh, uh, sports or whatever case may be, if you enjoy it, you're a mark because you will buy. If you're a football fan, you will buy the jerseys. You'll buy the hat. You're a mark. If you're a movie buff and you enjoy buying the DVDs, you enjoy investing in the stream site, you're a mark. Everyone's a mark in certain levels. There's just certain levels of quote unquote Marxism that I'm not a part of. I'm not an autograph hound. I don't run around chasing photos with, with with wrestlers or whatever. I'm just not that. I'll collect a t-shirt here and there, or if you can see when we film, I have my, my, my collectibles that's around. That's fine for that. But as a mark to where I'm kissing and sucking dick, listen, if you tell me that you can't or don't want to do my show, peace. We good. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm not going to blow your beef for that shit. Whatever. But at the end of the day, we're all marks. You're an auto, you're, you're a guy who loves cars, and you buy fucking posters, or you soup up your 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 your, your Volkswagen Jetta with all this, and you're not even driving it. You're just leaving it there, and you drive your other makeshift uh, family van, your soccer mom van, but you, you're souping up your 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 Jetta to be uh, a pristine condition uh, uh, sports car. You're a mark, but and that's fine. You're not offending me by calling me a mark, and it's funny because a lot of you guys use the terminology mark, and it's like okay, I use it too. But in any case, so I see the video, and of course, he's doing the commentary over the interview, and like I said, I'm getting hit with shrapnel with it. I thought your gripe was with Teddy. Why us? Why why are we getting hit with it? I understand your 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 host, your media, your your you gotta make the show entertaining. But all right, so I guess we became part of your fodder. Awesome. 
But I also thought that your axe to grind was with Teddy because of the allegations and the accusations. I thought that was where your axe to grind was. I, I, I didn't know that, that we became part of it. And mind you, like I said, I'm not mad. I'm not, I'm not even upset about it. I just wanted to give you know listeners the feedback and my thoughts about why and how everything occurred. And mind you, that night, I gotta tell you, I, I listened I listened back to the Teddy Hart interview. I was fucking gone. I was, <laughs> I was done so. But in a good way, I wasn't like blackout drunk. But it was just one of those moments that like, what am, what am I gonna do in 10 minutes time? Of course, I'm gonna just sit there and just let him ramble, let him go, give him leading questions and just let him rock. What else am I gonna do? Nightwave had already had an interview with the man which got thousands upon thousands of views which hit on on, on multi-platform media and certain sheets and basically got the attention that he that he was well deserved because that's what you did it for what i'm gonna do beat a dead horse why am i gonna do that because it's damn if i do damn if i don't if i did that then it's like, I'm I, oh, 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 look at these these guys. They fucking copying me. All these guys are fucking haters. All these guys want to be me. And look, 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 look what he's doing. All he's doing is copy and pasting what I did. But I didn't do it. And oh, you're a fucking mark. All you are is a fucking mark. What the, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Just go, hey, Teddy, uh, let talk to 30, t talk for 20 minutes about what, what, what everything's about. And just be a, a shill of what's going on. Doesn't work that way. But as I said, I, I I I found it funny. The only thing that actually upset me was because I didn't I didn't listen to the whole um, reaction video. I I only skipped through it because I I just wanted to hear or, and see how much that he played of the video. I don't I'm not even sure because I I'm not, I didn't even check to see if he played the whole thing because if he played the whole thing, it's like damn dude shit. At least fucking honor us and. And play a couple of minutes of this shit and then say, listen, you want to hear the whole bullshit and bash us that way. You want to hear a crappy interview and listen to what the fuck Teddy says. Go to their website at Turnbuckle Tabloid. But you can't do it because, once again, you know, motherfuckers can't do shit like that because, you know, there's no there's no honor among thieves or there's no honor amongst fucking podcasters. I pay, I pay, I, I give recognition to, uh, to, to recon, um, recognition to individuals who show me love and I give it back to them like a Jim Russell or, 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 or impact Brody. Those guys are doing their thing. I'm not hating on them. Let them do, you know, as a matter of fact, you play commercials on, on this, on this show. We, I don't, I don't hate on it. Even when we said about the whole, um, night wave and Teddy Hart conversation early on, it was like, yo, go to his, go to his YouTube page and listen to the rest of it. That shit was crazy. But, you know, I, I got to get hit with, uh, with shrapnel. And like I said, I'm not mad about it because I do it to everybody else as well. Can't be mad. I just want to let it be known. I was like, shit, my God, damn. Thanks for the compliments. Thanks that I look like a thug. Because that's what he said. I look like a thug. I'm, it's not something I've not heard before. As a matter of fact, I think that's the, the image that I, I've been pining for for the past 40-something years of my life. I, I, I look like a auto repair guy no excuse me audio repair guy not even auto an audio repair guy audio repair so which means i'm sorry but i can't fix your stereo guy i can't i can't make um the dolby surround sound happen although i'm a tech guy i'm not i, I don't get paid for that and i'm not a tattoo parlor owner i'm not a a a father of four with four different baby mothers I am a city employee, though, and as many of you guys have listened to Turnbuckle Tablet, you know, I am a city employee. I do work in the health and hospitals. So I, it's not one of those things. And it was, what was it I said? Oh, I, it looked like I have not, I've not been able to leave the hood. Well, I left the hood. At the end of the day, the hood's never left me. But uh, other than that, guys, the Teddy Hart interview will be released on this week's episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid. Make sure you listen to that. If you haven't heard it on YouTube and you've not heard it on the Facebook Live, it'll be on the, on the podcast. It'll be on this week's episode. Interesting interview. If you want to call me a mark, call me a mark, whatever. I just said, I can't, you know, there's, when your hands are tied and they're, in, and especially due to the circumstance in which 
Teddy and his handlers saw the scenario. I mean, what are you gonna do? You gotta go. You gotta go for for what it is. I'm not gonna say this. Like, what? I can't talk to him and say what I want to say. But fuck him. I can't. No, nah, fuck that. Let Teddy go. Fuck it. What are we gonna do? He's a good guy. He let it rock. As for his allegations and the accusations, what it occurs with? Why I didn't bring it up? Why didn't I mention their name? Why didn't it occur? You know why? Because I didn't even remember to bring it up. Because to be honest, I don't care. I did not care. Didn't care. It was far be it for me to do that because the only thing I thought about was just getting him on the air and discuss what happened after and what, what occurred for him to be put in jail. Anything other than that, I didn't care. I'm not going to sit there and, and as a matter of fact, I didn't even bring up Nightwave's name. Teddy did. I just rolled with it for a couple of minutes and I was like, oh, what's your thoughts about um, the aftermath or what that occurred, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. That was it. Even in the pre, the, the pre-interview before we got him on the air, he wasn't even brought up. The only thing that was brought up is like, listen, guys, do us a favor. You know, don't don't treat him horribly and don't sandbag him. It was like, no problem. I'll take care of him. I got him. Other than that, we were good. But um, yeah, so check out this week's interview, uh, interview with Teddy Hart on this week's episode of Turmeric Tabloid. If you haven't heard it yet, if you don't want to wait, until the podcast is released, make sure you check it out on YouTube, on the Turnbuckle Tabloid YouTube page, as well as on our Facebook Live on the group page is there. And also, I believe I shared it on the page. Okay. Other than that, guys, thanks for hearing me out. This is me venting. 30 Minutes Smart. We out of here. Much coming down for this upcoming week. Much more uh, uh, wrestling info in store, and as well as all the ridiculousness and stupid shit that happens. And by, by the way, just to let you guys know, I am not that individual that is afraid of controversy. I have said most ridiculous, outlandish, and possibly um, hateful shit on the show. Not afraid of it. I, I've been labeled a misogynist, a homophobe, uh, a sexist, whatever you want to name. I've been labeled all that shit. But at the end of the day, I've never held back when it came to talking straight to you guys. The talent is different because, you know, at the end of the day, a guy like Nightwave, he does everything else. With me, I do strictly wrestling. I got to keep that fucking line open. He, If he doesn't have wrestlers on the show or whatever, he will still survive because he'll still have his followers because he does everything else outside of wrestling. We're a wrestling show. Got to keep got to keep it pushing. But I ain't kissing nobody's ass to be on, on this fucking show. Hell no. And neither is Oski. So, guys, once again, thanks for, for listening and following. I am out of here and you guys check you out later.